everyone and welcome yourselves back to the channel back for the next episode of waterly road a bit of a hiatus as we did a few other videos in regards to season two we've still got a few more to do but i just took a bit of a break from waterly road i just finished off a few other series and seasons like clarkson's farm um so yes here we are with waterly road season three episode two a great episode i'm loving the vibes of the show it's very different there's some writing issues I have with the show, um, but in general, I think it was a good second episode, obviously getting closer to a certain somebody leaving the show soon. So let's dive into this, of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave a like if you enjoy the Waterloo Road videos, be sure to check out the previous seasons, plus the Revival series in season 11 as the next season is set to drop at some point this year, apparently, as they're currently filming. So stick around for that, of course. Spoilers ahead and enjoy. So, second episode, you know, there's Eddie Lawson, there's Jasmine, there's the new English teacher, Davina, who's looking after Carla. Um, you know, you've got all your new students. It's Paul Langley's episode, this episode, which I thought he did a terrific job. Tom Milner did a, did a very good job at delivering a very realistic role in you know he's lost his mother to suicide he lives with his uh, domestically violent uh uncle and he's being trained uh, they're not, they're, obviously they didn't go about it the right way but bolton smiley and his goons have been teaching him how to fight and obviously it went a bit too far and what i loved about this episode was certain cat was start, start to love it's like, it's two episodes in, and I think the relationship between Eddie and Jasmine is so good. And not just together, I'm just generalized as teachers, they've come in, they've taken over from, you know, not Eddie's taken over from Andrew, and, you know, I loved Andrew and I love Eddie at the moment. Jasmine's come in. Technically, you would say she replaced um, Lorna, and she's doing a miles better job. Matt's come in, replaced Izzy slash Kim. He's doing a terrific job. I love what he's doing with. Um, the play and whatnot, and I'm looking forward to Steph finding out that he is end up, is is actually gay. Because uh, before I go back to Jasmine and Eddie, I, I want to touch upon this. They Walter the Road writers don't know how to write Steph or to be or uh, Denise Welsh, and I'll tell you why. It's this simple case of season one. She was just horny for Jack, and then Andrew for a period, and then Jack again. Season two. They, they rectified her, they made her better, they actually developed her in a better way, and all that development towards Maxine, and trying to be a better person, not be a drunk, and trying to actually be someone people can tolerate on screen was ruined towards the end of the series, but then sort of saved in, in the same way, but then season three, she has been the worst character, she's so horrible to Carla, she deserves to get slapped, she can't tolerate her, she's trying to get with Matt, She's horrible to Jasmine. She's dismissive towards Eddie. She just is a shit character. I you know, I thought they redeemed her in season two, but then we know season four, she's going to have a massive story. With Ma that Maxine has taken a massive step back. And there was so much potential there for that character. She appeared, but she just didn't do anything. Like your random characters, you know, like, you had know, like um, Danielle and Alicia, you know, you know. They came into the series, you know, Bolton and Dante and, uh, you know, Chloe and Mika and Brett. All these characters who are going for the play. I mean, Mika has a phenomenal voice and so does Alicia. I just loved how Dante started off with his awful Eminem rap. I thought that was brilliant. I think it was a rendition of Lose Yourself, I think. Can't fully tell if that was you know, correct. But, yeah, I... I, I another character I do want to point out is Lewis. Lewis is my my opinion the best written character over the three seasons. The way he de dealt with Carla, uh, the way he calmed down, uh, the way he went to Rimmer straight away when the knife disappeared. Uh, I love Candice dealing with Bolton. I thought that was a brilliant scene. Um, as I said, Jasmine and Eddie dealing with the gun or the violent situation with Paul and his uncle I think was very well done. They've written Jack. A Pauling in this series, and it's not because of Jack's acting or anything, because uh, I think he's doing the acting just as good, but, you know, pointing the finger at everybody, it's like, 
Steph is in the wrong. Eddie's helping you. Eddie, if Eddie was not there, you would have gone straight to the police. And he keeps going wanting, wanting to go to the police because of what happened in, in, at the end of season two with Izzy. He doesn't want a repeat of that. But Eddie was right on the point. He stopped Paul. He got the knife out of Paul's hand. And he brought him to the Kung Fu lessons or the Taekwondo lessons. Um, and Jack's pointing fingers towards Davina. But then Davina's priorities are elsewhere. So Jack's feeling isolated. He's having nightmares. He feels like it's going to happen to someone else. And you can see where this is all heading. That he will eventually leave Waterloo Road. Because he doesn't trust the, the faculty. He doesn't trust himself. Being put in a situation where he was at knife point again. It's just going to traumatise him. And the, the weight of the world has been against Rimmer. From the point of where he started this. He was struck into the headmaster job. He's dealt with. You know, Lorna's death, Izzy's death. Uh, he's dealt with abuse and drugs and violence and so much. You can understand what he's going through. Eddie has been at his side for two episodes and he's done so much. And it's incredible. I love the teaching staff in this season. You know, what I'd say, right, with the whole Carla Benton thing, you know, with Davina, Grantley's dealt with it the best way possible. He has moved her and, you know, he's put her in an environment where she won't be stressed or freaked out. So to be fair, he's done what he felt best. And I can't really put him wrong, but isolating at the same time can affect him for, for worse. So <clears throat> these teachers were never prepared for this sort of stuff. They've always been prepared for people who just don't want to listen, who don't want to be there or just are troublemakers or you have the odd people who do want to study. Like Chloe, who obviously gets extra tuition lessons off Brett now, originally going to be Steph, but obviously this is where we're leading down another storyline, another thing that's going to be affected um, between the, the riff graph between Dante and Chloe. You can see there's a bit of control from Dante now they're married, but um, you can tell by the end of the episode, and going off next time, that Mika and Chloe will get together in some form, but it's going to break Dante and Mika massively. So I'm intrigued to see how they pull it all off, but I think for the most part, um, it was a really good episode for certain characters, you know, Bolton, Paul, Eddie, Jasmine, um, Rimmer, I think, had an okay episode. Davina's intriguing, you know, Carl is intriguing. Lewis is good. Um, I just think they have to improve Steph because she's just, is she nice? Is she nice? Is she nice? I, giving her the role of pastoral care is just laughable to, 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 to full on. You could have given it to anyone. He could have brought a new, fresh character in, but they decided to keep her in that role. So, very, very fascinating. Um, but I'm very much excited for the next episode because we're going to see Jack and Tom go head-to-toe in what is going to be a very emotional and violent confrontation, as you can see, because Jack is just burning inside for him to for Tom to admit to him that he, he blames him for everything that happened to Izzy. And... I don't know why Tom blames him because Tom did everything he could to do with the drug thing. He called the police. He attempted to get him shifted. He faced off against Seddon. He's tried to put Lewis in his place. He fought against Seddon. And then Izzy happened to be the wrong place at the wrong time. Jack was, to an extent, dealing with it. But had he not Seddon stabbed Izzy, he would never have fled the situation. So it's always one of the situations. Izzy, in many ways, saved Jack's life. Jack, unfortunately, couldn't save Izzy's life. Just one of those things, and I'm intrigued to see where that story goes. But it, you can tell it's coming to the boiling point of Jack. Eddie's an incredible replacement, and I'm excited to see where the rest of the series goes and how long Steph will last. Because, yeah, it's her last chance. Yeah, she had a face-off with multiple teachers, but ultimately, it's going to be funny to see <laughs> the reaction when Matt comes out as gay. Well, he's already come out as gay, but obviously it's um, it's not apparent to her. Because obviously he's an attractive guy to her, and obviously she likes to hit on every attractive guy in the show because that's all they, they see Steph as. It's pathetic, in my opinion, from the writer, because there's so much potential left, Steph. You know, to be a better teacher, to be a better role model, their stories, look after Maxine, have scenes with Maxine. It's like they're a strain or something. I don't know. It's baffling. But altogether, altogether a very enjoyable episode, and I'm excited to get back into the show and fly through season three because I am looking forward to seeing Rachel Mason at some point. So subscribe, like as always. Until next time, goodbye.